Hello there chaps and welcome to group work seven. We're going to be talking about a DAX function called related. So let's just run through the objectives so that we're clear about what's coming up and what's ahead of us. So we're going to look at the related function and it brings us back to relationships. And with the related function, relationships really matter. We're going to see that we build the expression in the many side of a one to many relationship. So we are requesting or retrieving information from that one side. The related function is created in a column and in our introduction to calculated columns earlier on, I did allude to the fact that we were coming back to columns and this is it. I think you'll see that the function works very much like VLOOKUP does in regular Excel. And then we'll flip it. By using the related table function, we can turn the tables quite literally and we can retrieve information that we need from the many side. OK, guys, so that's what's coming up. That's our objectives. And I'll see you for Group Work 7. Hi everyone, so I am on page 42 of the user guide and we're looking at group work 7 and the related function. So the related function requires that a relationship exists between the current table that you're constructing the function or expression in and the table with the related information that you want to pull or retrieve across. So you specify the column that contains the data that you want. The related function retrieves that value from the specified column in the related table. Does sound a lot like VLOOKUP, doesn't it? Now, the related function retrieves from the one side and it places the information into the many side of that relationship. So let's think about this. Let's suppose that we're in the sales table, which is the many side and we're looking up a product price. So the two keys that relate those two tables are say the product key. So starting in the sales table, we can retrieve the price of product X from the product table. The related function will work its way all the way down the product table looking for the price of product X. It finds it, grabs it, brings it back to the sales table and dumps it in row one. Then it goes to row two and it looks for product Y. Now we go over to the product table, interrogate the product table for product Y, get the price and it retrieves it into the sales table. Then it goes to row three looking for product Z, goes back to the product table, interrogates looking for the price of product Z. So it works exactly like VLOOKUP. Right, enough already. I'm going to stop with the verbals and let's get it visually. So page 42 and it asks us to insert a new pivot table into a worksheet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm in 2016 and I'm going to click out of my pivot table and select to insert a new one. Other versions, guys, you're going to do this from the Power Pivot data model window. The default is picking up that we've got a data model and we're going to put it into a new worksheet. So first things first is group work seven. And I'll move that to the right of practice exercise six. So from our products table, we want category in columns. So products, there's our hierarchy, and we know that category forms part of the hierarchy, but we also know expanding more fields, category is still available on its own, and we'll just drop that into the columns drop zone. Then from the customers table, we want occupation into rows. And from the sales table, we want order quantity. And there's our total order quantity. Now, everyone, we've got our pivot table in and we are going to investigate if the total number of clothing sales by professionals, as indicated by the highlighted cell here, if it's actually correct. And of course, it is going to be correct because we entirely trust 
the power pivot engine that's providing us with that result working in the background correctly. Now we're going to have some fun and use the related function to check that that figure is actually correct and it also helps us to embed and understand really how the power pivot model, the data model in the background is actually working. For real life examples of when you will use related and its associated related table function, then that's going to be your job in the practice exercises. But just to reinforce and underpin your knowledge of what's going on and the similarities to be look up, we're just going to have some fun and recreate the filter context that allows this figure to be displayed correctly. So the first thing to do is open up the data model and select the products table. We're going to filter the category column. Let's find that. So we'll filter the category column so that only clothing is selected and we can see here that there's 48 items in the products table categorized as clothing. Now we know that there's a one-to-many relationship between the products and the sales table but do we know which two fields relate the two tables? Now if you're not too sure we can simply go to diagram view and just highlight the connector between the product table and the sales table and can you see the the green faint line surrounding the two keys so it's the product key and it's this key that looks at all the records in the product table and matches them to the sales table to find a match now that's probably sounding very familiar to you if you're using VLOOKUP to bring all of your data together into one table in preparation to build your pivot tables. But we know now that that's old hat. We don't do that in Power Pivot anymore. We leave our tables of data separate and we connect them by relating them together. And that works far more efficiently than preparing our one table mindset with VLOOKUPs. Right, what I think I might do, chaps, is just pause it there and we'll just pick up where we left off in the next video lecture. So I'll see you in just a couple of secs.